before I met Bill and Tani when I was in Africa, I was in Rwanda and Mozambique and South Africa, where my foundation works to build health systems, train people, and give them the least expensive life-saving medicine that's available anywhere in the world. And I took a day to go out to Kunu, Nelson Mandela's home village where he was a little boy in Zosa country, 400 miles east of Johannesburg. And I landed in the rolling farmland beneath the mountains that are the mountain kingdom of Lesotho, about 45 minutes from the village. And I got on this great modern highway. It was a great highway. But it was still South African farm country, so I kept having to slow down for the goats, the sheep, and the dogs to cross the road. And the guy kept apologizing. I said, don't apologize to me. I grew up in Arkansas in the 50s. I'm right at home. I've been here. I nearly got killed by a ram one time. And I went to see him. And he held my hand and we talked for a long time. And I thought of all the things that I had learned from watching him and why he is so special. How did he live 27 years in prison? Why did he destroy his marriage? He didn't get to see his kids grow up. Suffer physical and emotional abuse. Get out and not only invite his jailers to his inauguration, but far, far more important, he invited the leaders of the parties that oppressed him into his government. Why? Because he knew that the country had to go forward together. I wish we had just 10% of that in America. Just 10% of He knew that even he, as a great man who had suffered grievously, could not possibly be right all the time. Nobody's right all the time. A broken clock is right twice a day. All the rest of us are compelled to spend our poor lives somewhere between those two extremes. Hopefully we get it right more than twice a day. And sadly we never get it right all the time. Therefore the lesson that Sister Rosemary is teaching those girls to lift the scars from their heart and the spirits in their eyes and get them to think about today and tomorrow, not yesterday, is the lesson we all have to learn. Mandela told me once, I said, you know, you're a very great man, Mandela, but you are also one cagey politician. <laughs> so it was really good politics to put your jailers in the inauguration and to put the leaders of the parties that sent you to prison in your government. Now tell me the truth. When you were finally walking out of prison that last time, it was a great day, and early Sunday morning in Arkansas, I got my daughter, not quite 10, up and set her up on the kitchen counter in the governor's residence, and we watched it. I said, tell me the truth. Didn't you hate them all when you were walking out of prison for the last time? And he said, well, of course I did, briefly. But I thought to myself, they have had me so long. They took everything from me until I decided not to give my heart and my mind away. That they could not take without my permission. And I realized if I allowed myself to hate them when I got out of the compound, I would still be their prisoner. I wish to be free. And so I let it go. And And whenever I was in any kind of fight in Washington, and I had a few, you may remember, <laughs> Mandela would send me a message to an interlocutor who would always say, I got this message from my debate travel nickname. He said, and I had no idea what he meant, but he told me you would know. And I said, what's the message? It was always the same. He said, remember to let it go. <laughs> That's what Sister Rosemary was saying. We are condemned, whether we like it or not, to share the future. We live in an interdependent world. 
and gifts are evenly distributed. Six of the fastest growing economies in the world in this decade are in Africa. In the next decade, it's predicted that the seven will be. When Sister Rosemary was holding that purse up, she was holding up a metaphor for the potential of people that millions of the rest of us assume are somehow not as smart as we are, not as entrepreneurial as we are, not as gifted as we are. Oh, yes, they are. They just need to be emotionally free. They need education. They need health care. They need people who are pulling for them. They need people who understand that genomically we're all 99.5% the same and we waste an enormous percentage of our lives focused on the half a percent of us that's different from everybody else and too little time on the 99.5% we have in common. Every, every single non-age related difference you can see in this grand audience tonight. Gender, your body shape, your height, your eye color, everything you can see is rooted in half a percent of your genome. It isn't worth 99.5% of your obsession or mine. And I'm just as guilty as anybody else because it's not just about politics. It's, oh, I wish I were a little taller, a little thinner. Dear Lord, the Olympics are a trial. I thought, man, if I had a body like that, I'd go in a different line of work. Every time Michael Phelps was on the platform, I thought, if only my shoulders had been twice as broad. <laughs> we do this. Little of it's healthy and good. A lot of it demeans the human spirit that moved you so in Sister Rosemary's speech. So I ask you to think about this. Bill and Tanny Austin, they built this hugely successful company and decided the real purpose of their life was to empower other people to live their lives. And now, every single year, they give the gift of hearing to more than 100,000 people. It is a staggering thing for one company to do. And they are just going to start. I think somehow falling into their orbit is about a, well, one of the single most important things that has happened to me, one of the greatest gifts I have received since I left the White House. And it reminded me again why somehow, some way, we have to find a way in America, both within our country and beyond our borders, to recognize that disagreement is healthy, it's good. We all have different perspectives and different knowledge and different understanding. But the end of it must be to come together to do something that gives the children of this country and the world a better future. And you saw those girls in Sister Rosemary's film. The children of the world are worth it. Thank you for what you do to give it to them. Bless you. Thank you.